Hi everybody, my name is Zoe from Sugar Street Studios and I'm filming this video today to help celebrate the launch of our brand new Sugar Clay. Gonna get my sweets, which one will it be? Got the baker and the candy. So what is sugar clay? What is it? Well, it's a sculpting paste. It's an edible sculpting paste. It has a lovely, light almond flavour, is how I would best describe it. And it can be used for sculpting things on an itty bitty scale. So maybe uh, little toppers that go on cupcakes even, right through to a big, sculpted bust cake, for example. The reason that it is so good to work with, uh, I believe, and it really was designed for somebody like me in mind, <laughs> who needs time, I need time. I need a pace that is forgiving, that is just gonna allow me to come back to it if I want to change or lock bits off and add bits on again. This paste gives you that. And the reason that it gives you that is because it has, one of its um, ingredients is cocoa butter. And the cocoa butter in the paste allows you to work and seam the paste so that any joins you make become invisible under the heat of your fingers. And as such, you make a mistake, you don't like something, you've made a nose too big, Slice it off, put it back on again, blend it together with your fingers, and et voila, it's like it never happened. Um, but the paste is designed to be as forgiving and as kind as possible, whatever your level of sugar crafting and cake decorating. So this is how it comes. It comes in a tub um, with a resealable lid. This tub is important, this is what's going to keep your paste fresh, so don't throw it out, use it to store your paste afterwards. And when it comes, like this, so we will unwrap it, and you'll get that lovely smell of almond, that is rock solid hard, okay? So what we need to do, obviously because you can't work it like this, is we need to get it into a workable state. Will it be? Got the baker and the candy man crazy for me. Can't quite decide, will it be that one or this? Both of them competing. So let's say you have more pace that you want to work with, um, and that, you know, uh, let's be honest, that is going to be pretty hard. You can just either pop this near a warm radiator before you're going to use it, or if you have a microwave, just pop it in. And when I say pop, I really do mean pop. You can see how much easier it is off the bat to work with. Now, if you do heat it up in this way, you will see in the paste a natural release of oils, this is normal. This means that the paste is working. Okay. You can see now, we have gone from hard to super soft and super stretchy. The oils that are released during the working phase of the clay dry mat your piece will not stay looking shiny uh, at all. It won't. Okay, so please don't worry about that. It will dry uh, nice and matte and will dry firm like the paste that you received when you first got it. just want to show you what happens if you overheat the paste, if you make it too hot, it becomes very, very oily and it's, it, the formula starts to break down slightly, okay? It, if you have done this, it doesn't mean that you've ruined your paste, it just means that it's got too hot and it needs to cool down, it needs to cool off. You want your paste to be looking like that. 
rather than like that. I'm just going to do something very, very simple just so that you can see in principle um, how it works. Now this is 100% sugar clay, um, which is what I would make most uh, toppers and armature models, something like this out of. If I'm going bigger scale on a, on a piece, um, you can blend this with sugar paste. You can do a 75% sugar clay, 25% sugar paste mix. Um, the reason for doing this is it makes your clay go further. just how easy, now that it's soft and warmed up, just how easily putting little details and indentations and things are into the clay. We're going to add some ears onto this elephant and this is where I want to show you how easy it is to stick together. Now as I'm working this, I don't know whether you can see, but as I, as I am working this, the paste is beginning to release those natural oils. Can you see it's got that slight sheen to it? This is what's enabling us to, for it to self-stick. Sugar clay does not need edible glue or water or sugar water or anything else for it to stick. It self-sticks. You can see that as I'm blending that line, that line is disappearing. Now if you find that your fingers are too big for certain details, can go in with the tools. And we'll do the same on the back. Now you can see I'm handling it and we're under the lights here so it's quite warm. Now if it becomes too sticky for you to work with, pop it into the fridge. Number one is to pre-colour it. This is where you add colour to the white paste before you start. So, uh, a professional gel paste, whichever brand you like, this is a Magic Colours, but whichever one, I've tested most of them and they all work really, really well. Um, you can also pre-colour by using um, powders that are designed for chocolate and also just by kneading in things like fond dust or regular, um, Petal dust will also colour the paste, but gel paste probably work the best. That's the first way. The second way is to, let's assume you're working with a white canvas, is to apply the colour on top by using dry petal dusts. So this elephant was white and we're just brushing in with a soft brush the colours and building up the colours. I like this technique, especially if you're going for something that's slightly more realistic, this is a great one uh, to do. The third technique is to paint the clay. Uh, now, this I did with the petal dust because I already had it and I mixed it up with alcohol, um, but you can equally mix up a paint using gel pastes and uh, if you mix up with alcohol, lemon extract, rejuvenated spirit, whatever it is you use and create a lovely paint, you can paint and um, straight onto the sugar clay and it absorbs it no problem whatsoever. The fourth way, and this we are really excited about, 
is that you can airbrush sugar clay. However, and this bit's important, you have to use the right type of airbrush paints. And the right type of airbrush paints for sugar clay are ones that are ethanol based or designed for airbrushing onto chocolate. That's because there's cocoa butter in there and a regular water-based airbrush paint will repel and bead and will start streaking. So you need to use the right type of airbrush paints. This is Spectrum Flow. They're ethanol-based paints and they um, airbrush beautifully onto the sugar clay with no problems whatsoever. And actually there is a fifth. There is a fifth, which is pre-mixed uh, paints and pre-mixed metallic paints. I've just added a little bit of gold onto this elephant here, which has just come straight out of the pot. And again, this goes onto the paste, no problem whatsoever. So hopefully you can see it is pretty versatile to color and designed in a way so that you can color it the way that you like. I've been looking for a paste that, that will be compatible with my way of working and my way of working needs time uh, and needs flexibility and needs adaptability and I'm hoping that whether you're a beginner or a professional that this pace will offer that uh, to you and offer an alternative to the current pace that are out there and also to modeling chocolate I know I've had clients that don't always like chocolate I can you believe it but but it's true, they don't, uh, so this paste um, is, is a great alternative to that as well. So that is it, I hope you found that video useful. Uh, if you have any questions at all, then you can find Sugar Street Studios on social media and just drop me a message via Instagram or Facebook or a good old fashioned email at zoe at sugarstreetstudios.com. The paste is available exclusively at the Cake Decorating Company. Um, they ship worldwide. Um, next day shipping, they have a fantastic range of all sorts of products. The best candy from the north or the south. Make me sweet surprises.